what's going on guys welcome to the vlog coach right here and today we're gonna cover hgh or human growth hormone and mk677 or abutamoran or abutamoran or nodrobal so maraming um, curious about these two kung ano daw yung similarities nila difference and benefits so yun yung i-discuss natin for today if interested ka about this topic just stay with me and let's go it's not a game it's a rich thing So disclaimer first, first of all, I'm not a doctor, I'm just a registered nurse in the Philippines and a certified personal trainer here in the UAE. So kung ano man yung knowledge na makuha nyo mula sa video na to, eh bahala na kayo dun, okay? So this video is just for entertainment and educational purposes only. Okay, so MK677 or Ibutamorin or Nutroval versus HGH or Human Growth Hormone. So, medyo mahaba-habang usapan to. So, sa inyo ba gusto magsimula? Sige, mag-umbisa muna tayo sa MK677. So, na-discuss ko na to about, I think, two years ago when I started the SARM series. If gusto nyo balikan, okay lang din naman. But medyo outdated na yon. So, I decided to do another video. And since marami din naman interested about Human Growth Hormone and about MK677, kung ano ba yung similarities nila and differences, if magkapareho ba talaga sila. So, sige, mag-start muna tayo sa MK677. MK677 is not a SARM, although lagi siya napapasama sa SARMs family or sa SARMs group or selective androgen receptor modulator. It is not a SARM, it is a growth hormone secretagogue or ghrelin receptor agonist. Ghrelin receptor agonist meaning it works on imitating the hormone ghrelin. So ano ba tong ghrelin? So ghrelin is the hunger hormone. So itong hunger hormone na to, it plays an important role when it comes to um, natural growth hormone and IGF-1 production. That's why yung main reason kung bakit siya ginagamit ng mga bodybuilders to MK677, it's because it promotes a uh, visible muscle gain. So, itong MK677, it was proposed to treat growth hormone deficiency kasi nga, it can mimic the growth hormone stimulating effect ng digestive hormone ghrelin. Proposed meaning hindi ba siya FDA approved for human consumption. Approved siya for research purposes unlike uh, human growth hormone na FDA approved na. Okay? So, if we will compare MK677 to a compound, it's not somatropate, it's not human growth hormone, okay? So, siya yung closest thing na masasabi kung um, talagang sobrang identical when it comes to mechanism of action and uh, function sa GHRP6 or growth hormone releasing peptide 6. So, yung GHRP6, siya yung pinakaunang GHRP. Kasi maraming GHRP, meron pang GHRP2 and other types of GHRP. Okay, so siya yung pinakaunang GHRP na napag-aralan na very um, effective when it comes to um, stimulating growth hormone. So, coach, paano mo naman nasabing sobrang identical itong GHRP6 to MK677? So, paano nga ba? Siyempre, nagamit ko na to pareho. So, gumamit muna ako ng GHRP6 before taking MK677. Okay? So, when it comes to function and results, talagang high-loss identical sila. And let's say, appetite boosting effect nitong dalawang to. Sige, yun muna. So, GHRP6 dosing at 2 to 4 IU. Um, grabe yung appetite na binibigay nito. So, if you want to size up, gain a quality puzzle size, bulking, magandang gamitin tong GHRP6. And same with MK677, but to reach that kind of um, effect and appetite boosting, kailangan mong taasan yung dosage mo. Let's say, um, 10 milligrams ng MK677, yes, you will feel the hunger and uh, muscle gains and strength as well. But um, if you will compare 2 IU to 4 IU ng GHRP6, mas effective pa rin yun. So, in able to reach that, you need to increase the dose of MK677 to about at least 20 milligrams per day. So, I remember before, uh, I joined the pizza eating contest and then um, I took GHRP6. Grabe! I almost won. Finished second place. Lumawang lang sa akin ng half slice ng pizza yung nag first place. And talagang patay gutom lang talaga yun. Okay? So, literal. So, anyway, um, MK677, boost din yung appetite ko dito. 
but at low dose, hindi masyado. And ang habol ko kasi kay MK677 is yung um, sleep quality. So, sobrang ganda ng tulog ko dito. Same with GHRP6, but the problem with GHRP6 is yung sobrang hunger. So, if you took it at night, hindi naman ako makatulog kasi nga sobra yung gutom na binibigay ni GHRP6. So, I need to eat something before uh, sleeping. Kasi nga, ang hirap matulog na sobrang gutom eh. So, yun lang yung problema ko kay GHRP6 if I will take them before bedtime. So, I'm taking GHRP6 early in the morning kapag uh, pagkagising ko. Unlike MK677, pwede ko siyang i-take before bedtime kasi nga yun yung habol ko sa kanya is yung sleep quality, yung uh, rapid eye movement, so malalim na tulog for muscle recovery and um, pahinga na rin, syempre. So, ayun. Um, when it comes to um, side effects, halos parehas lang din. Yun nga, it boosts your appetite big time but more on GHRP6. Siguro, isa sa mga advantage ni MK677 compared to GHRP6 and other peptides and even with sumatropine is mas affordable siya. So, MK677 is much cheaper compared to GHRP6 and other peptides and sumatropine itself. So, isa to sa main reason kung bakit nag-shift or si switch yung mga peptide users and HGH user is because of the price. Okay? So, if wala kang budget, huwag ka na mag-GH. Isa to sa mga sinasabi ko, doon sa mga tao na nagtatanong sa akin na gusto mag-cycle ng HGH or peptides ng for 2 months, 3 months, lagi ko sinasabi sa ila, huwag yun ang kasayangin yung pera nyo. If gusto nyo mag-cycle ng HGH, you need to cycle it for at least 6 months to get the desired results that you want. So, another main advantage siguro ni MK677 is MK677 is designed with superior oral bioavailability and serum half-life compared to GHRP6 and the route of administration as well. Kasi si um, MK677 sobrang convenient niya. It comes on pill form or capsule form. So, orally lang siya tinetake and yung half-life niya is 24 hours. So, you have to take it just once a day. Unlike GHRP6 and uh, somatropine, you have to take it up to five times a day and uh, oral, hindi siya oral route, ang route of administration niya is subcutaneously so kailangan pa siyang um, i-dilute and kailangan pa siyang ilagay sa insulin syringe or tuberculin syringe and if gumagamit ka ng pen, uh, syempre mas convenient yung compared to um, yung dinidilute nyo pa sa sa bottle and then i-transfer pa sa insulin syringe so sobrang matrabaho And if busy person ka, medyo nakakatamad gawin yun, di ba? But yun nga, yung mga pen form, mas expensive yun compared to those sets na nabibili na kailangan mo siyang i-dilute all sterile water, mas matrabaho nga lang yun. So, yun. Ito yung mga reasons kung bakit nag-shift to MK677 yung mga um, HGH user and peptide users. Kasi nga, mas convenient, mas madaling gamitin, mas mura. And um, yung result na pwede nilang makuha on peptides, just like GHRP6, is pwede naman nilang makuha with MK677 but with higher dosage. Kahit bumili ka pa ng tatlong bottle ng MK677, much cheaper pa rin siya compared to uh, HGH, yung legit na HGH. Ha? So regarding dosage, there's no optimal dose yet. But yung cycle range nito, nagre-range siya ng 10mg to 50mg. And relatively safe dose is at 25 milligrams taken once every day. Okay, kasi yung half-life niya is 24 hours, so you just have to take it once a day, unlike HGH. Okay, so ang uh, cycle length nito, hindi rin siya typically cycled, but it depends on your goal. Okay, so usually ang um, cycle nito for men is 8 to 16 weeks, for women, Um, six to eight weeks, okay? So, yun usually na nangyayari, but it is not typically cycled. So, based on studies, kick-in time nito is three to four weeks, but based on my own experience, four to six weeks, okay? So, other side effects is yung joint pain and yung swelling ng fingers. Yung joints mo sa fingers, parang swollen yung mga yan, parang naglalaki yung mga daliri mo. And then, uh, it was caused by water retention and bloating. And mainly, Nasa diet mo pa rin yan eh. Okay? So, control your sodium levels. Hindi ko naman sinabing i-eliminate mo na yung sodium sa diet mo kasi kailangan niya ng katawan mo is an electrolyte. Pero balansehin mo. Huwag ka sobra sa sodium. Okay? And increase your fluid intake as well. So, pwede ka rin maka-experience ng lethargy but 
that is mainly because of eating too much. Okay? Kasi nga, boost yung appetite mo kahit ka nakain. So, um, yung katawad mo, magpo-focus yan on digesting your food. So, you will feel lethargic talaga. Okay, so move on na tayo sa HGH or Human Growth Hormone. Okay, so ano nga ba itong HGH? So, itong HGH, it was naturally secreted in your anterior pituitary gland and then it binds your HGH receptor that promotes stimulation of IGF-1. So, itong IGF-1, ito yung nagkakos ng muscle growth. Okay, so ganun lang kasimple yun. So, HGH is a prescription drug. So, available as prescription drug siya. Pwede talaga siyang gamitin for human consumption. Unlike MK677, na hindi ba siya approved by FDA. And just for research purposes only. Okay? So, benefits ni HGH is mainly just like benefits din ni MK677. So, uh, it improves your physical performance, muscle gain, uh, fat burning, good sleep. Uh, quality and um, syempre bone density skin hair nails and ano pa ba so mostly yung mga sinabi ko kanina na benefits ng MK677 is na kay HGH na lahat yun okay so I think isa lang sa mga benefits ng MK677 na hindi common sa HGH is yung increase appetite okay so I think yun lang but aside from that yung fat burning uh, muscle mass endurance, athletic performance, um, bone density, skin hair nails, and other stuff meron kay HGH. Okay, so yun lang talaga yung uh, increase in appetite yung nakikita kong wala kay HGH na pwede ibigay ni MK677 and GHRP6. So HGH side effects naman tayo, nandiyan na yung rush and pain dun sa injection site. Kasi nga, di ba, uh, subcutaneous yung route of administration niya, meaning you have to inject it on your fat or in your subcutaneous fat like on your belly okay so unlike MK677 na oral route meaning uh, by mouth so susubo mo lang siya and ayun na okay na yun okay so isa siya sa main um, problem when it comes to taking this kind of injection human growth hormone is yung rash and pain sa injection site although sobrang lead lang naman yung needle na gagamitin mo but Yung iba kasi sobrang sensitive when it comes to uh, injections. And other side effects is, nandiyan na rin yung joint pain, um, swelling, bloating, uh, water retention, um, ano pa ba, yung increased blood sugar level. And these side effects will also depend on your diet, sabi ko nga kanina. And one thing to counter it is um, taking them with cardarine or glenbutrol which can control the water retention and the bloating, okay? So, usually, ganun yung nangyayari. So, let's talk about the similarities of MK677 and HGA. So, itong dalawang to, they were both developed to counter GH deficiencies on adults and children and to improve quality of life and, syempre, to boost your growth hormone and IGF-1. And that can lead to, syempre, bone mineral density, sleep quality, and to improve quality of life overall. Okay, so yun yung similarities nito ng dalawang to, pareha sila ng purpose. So both can be used for bulking, for cutting, and body recomposition. Both can be used by women. Both have mild side effects. And um, ano ba ba? Both can be stuck with other compounds. So both are flexible compounds that can be stuck with other anabolics and other SARMs. Now, let's talk about the differences nitong dalawa. So, kanina ko pa nababanggit yung ibang differences nila and similarities. But sige, pagkumparahin na natin. Okay, so, route of administration, MK677, oral route meaning by mouth. So, mas madali siyang itake and mas convenient. You have to take it just once a day kasi ang half-life niya is 24 hours. Okay, so, si uh, HGH naman, route of administration is subcutaneous meaning you have to inject it on your subcutaneous fat, on your belly. And for bodybuilders, ginagawa rin nila tong IM kasi sabi nila, meron daw localized effect to. Like for example, lagging body part mo is your chest, so you have to inject it on your chest. Or if your biceps is lagging, para may habol yung growth ng bicep mo, i-inject nila to sa bicep nila. Half-life, MK677, overall half-life, 24 hours. HGH circulating half-life niya is just 20 to 30 minutes and biological half-life niya is 17 
to 19 hours. Okay, so mas mahaba pa rin yung half-life ni MK677. That's the reason you have to take it only once a day. Unlike CHGH, usually um, you have to take it at least twice a day. One in the morning, one late at night before bed. Next is, I think, yung volume of research. CMK677 is still under development, while CHGH is highly backed by science na. That's why prescription drug na siya, unlike MK677, which is still under development and hindi pa siya approved by FDA. So, highly backed by science na CHGH compared to MK677 na under development pa rin. And syempre, budget-friendly, mas budget-friendly si MK677 much cheaper than a legit pharma grade HGH. So, ayun, yung main reason kung bakit nag-ship sila sa MK677. And na-mention ko na rin ito kanina. So, parang sinasummarize na lang natin, okay? So, ano pa ba? So, I think okay na yun, no? Na-discuss na natin. Yung basic lang, which is yun lang naman talaga yung kailangan yung malaman dito. And ayoko na magbigay ng mga medical terminologies. Baka mas lalo lang kayong malito. And hopefully, uh, nabigay ko yung information na need nyo. Or if cool lang, just let me know. Comment down below. And ayun. Thanks guys for watching. And I'll see you guys on the next vlog. God bless.